How's it going guys? This is Rio Muratov, Tower based in Tokyo. So a fellow subscriber and follower asked me this question. What tripod do I use when I travel? When I think they saw my like, Kawaguchiko video and my Hakona video and they were curious and asked me this question. And to be straight for, I currently as of 2024 use 100% Leo Photo tripod. And what's interesting is that I am not being sponsored by Leo Photo or affiliated at all. Everything I purchase on my channel is from my hard earned cash that I work as an e commerce photographer. And this is sort of like my biased opinion. So just hang in tight, guys, because I will try to clarify your questions. So I currently, for outdoor use when I'm traveling, I currently use Leo Photo's, uh, what's the name? The LX, the Leo Photo Urban's LX254 CT with the XB32 ball head, which comes bundled together. And that's basically my set overall setup when I'm going out to shoot outside in the wild, actually, with my GW690. I 100% use this tripod. And upon prior to this tripod, I actually purchased like four or five tripods, travel tripods. They were complete disasters, so I never mentioned it on my channel. So, but I am pretty confident to say that this is actually the one and only that should be on my channel because I've been using it for quite a long time and I am confident that it will make sense for you guys to like sit there and just watch my videos. So yeah, as of 2024, like I said, I use 100% Leo photo tripods and it was interesting because like what, 10 years ago, like you only had two options available when choosing a tripod. You either had Manfrotto or Gitzo and the majority of people who bought Manfrotto's when they wanted to upgrade, they all went to Gitzo. However, as of recent years, like 2020 or so, various manufacturers such as Leo Photo, Benro, Serui, started making more affordable tripods. And in my case, when I was trying to upgrade from my Manfrotto system, I did not want to shell out $1,000, $1,200 for one Gitzo tripod. And I realized later that if I purchase one Gitzo, that is actually equivalent to purchasing two Leo Photo tripods. And I said, no way, no Gitzo for me. I'm gonna go with Leo Photo. And I basically chose Leo Photo. And ever since then, I never looked back actually. I never thought or never will purchase a Gitzo if I'm right. Even if I become successful or not, I think it's not that worth it to purchase a Gitzo in my mind but I'm currently, as of now, use Leo Photo tripods. Like a recap education for you guys, Leo Photo tripods in their Urban Traveler series, which is equivalent to get those Traveler series, they have six within their lineup. As of 2024, they have the 324 CT, the 284 CT, 255 CT, 254 CT, which I currently own right now, 225 CT and the 224 CT which I actually previously owned. <laughs> and Leo Photo is one of the brands that I would say is the easiest to identify their product lineup. And the first two digits is basically their overall diameter of the widest part of the tripod leg. So the one that I purchased, the 254 CT, the 25 means 25 millimeters in diameter at the thickest point of the pole or the leg actually and four is basically how many sections they are in that tripod c is carbon t is traveler that's it kind of and like i said the urban traveler series is similar to get those traveler series which means that the leg itself you can basically like unfold 182 degrees and you can basically unfold it back into its original space. And the reason why you can do that, and also the reason why man car like tripod manufacturers want you to do that is that it basically shrinks down the overall footprint of the tripod itself to make carrying and traveling much easier. And the main reason why I went with this tripod in particular is that when you actually fold it down 182 degrees like this, this height or this wiggle length is roughly 450 millimeters and from all the tripods that i purchased all tri travel tripods i have the strong sense that 450 millimeter is that sweet spot anything bigger than that it will protrude a lot when you hang it beside your like backpack and anything smaller than that uh 
you will lose stability and stuff like that and there's a lot of problems with that and I think this 400 fill 50 millimeter is in that sweet spot range in terms of shooting with a medium format camera. And point number two that I want to make is this tripod itself weighs roughly 1.41 kilograms. And similarly, this is sort of like a trade-off. The lighter the tripod it is, the higher the chance it's gonna get blown away and you're gonna lose your medium format camera. Oh, goodbye, GW690, kinda. <laughs> I don't want that to happen. And anything like heavier than 1.41 kilograms, it's it will be like substantially sturdier, much more stable. However, you will lose that extra mile or stride when you're hiking somewhere or when you're traveling. And I think this 1.4 kilogram range is actually that sweet spot in terms of being able to travel with it and not get like tired too much from carrying a really heavy tripod. And also another reason why I purchased this like tripod in particular is this will really relatively depend on your overall physical height. And depending on your height, your needs will differ. And this tripod in particular, when you extend to the, what you call the highest point of contact without the center column being extended, becomes roughly 137 centimeters. I myself is 164 centimeters in terms of height. And I'm a, I'm a short Asian dude, sorry guys. but. <laughs> But when you consider the height of this tripod, 137 centimeters, you put a camera on top of the ball head, which is like 10 centimeters. So roughly you're getting 145 to 150 centimeters in terms of the ground up height of this tripod. And if that means that if I like scrunch down like 10 centimeters below eye level, I can basically shoot all right with this tripod. And also when you extend the center columns, this can go up to 163 centimeters if I'm right, roughly speaking. So that means that it can go beyond my personal height, which is, I will never do that because I can't see the, through the rangefinder. And at the same time, I have to mention that when you extend the center column, it, the tripod itself would become rather unstable so when i try to shoot with, on a tripod i never extend the center column at all but have it near ground level where it should be with a camera mounted on top and that's where i'm gonna get the most like what I call how should i say stability from this tripod in particular and obviously if you're like 170 centimeters or if you're like 180 centimeters your base height will have to go a little bit higher. So it has to be like what, 140, 150, or maybe 160 before extending the center column. So this will rel relatively speaking change depending on your personal height in particular. And this sort of like unstableness when extending the center column, there are other factors to keep in mind when purchasing a tripod. And up until this point, I realized that the sections matter a lot and from my experience, I will never recommend people with a medium format camera to like shoot on a tripod that has like five sections because the this is sort of like a trade-off. The more sections there are, the more easier it is to transport. However, the less stable it's gonna get because the more sections means that the tip of the tripod, this diameter right here, will get less than this thickness of a force, like what we call section tripod in most cases, which means that it cannot withstand that much of a vibration and that vibration gets like sort of like emitted towards the top end and the more sections there are the more higher chance that that vibration will get dealt to the camera when you're doing long exposures and from my experience four section tripods is that best sweet spot in terms of getting that extra stability while being rather compact and obviously a three section tripod is the best bet when shooting with medium format camera. However, the more sections there are, we have to sacrifice that portability, meaning that it's going to be a nightmare, a trauma to like carrying it around in our backpack. And because three section tripods will mean that the one sections we're gonna get longer, it's gonna be harder to stick or attach to our backpack. So there, it's basically this toss up of, do you want to sacrifice portability? for that stability or vice versa, you know, do you want the extra stability but less portability? And I personally think four section tripods fits into that category. The ball head that it comes with is called the XB 
32, which 32 is basically the diameter of the ball it's had of itself. This ball right here is the diameter is 32. And I, from my experience, this is that great area in terms of having that extra compactness while having the extra you know stability. Anything larger than this, I think it is a little bit of an overkill. Anything smaller than this, it might be less unstable in my mind. So unless if it's like the GW690 and also the Mamiya 7, which does not weigh that much, this 32 might be the best sort of like sweet spot in terms of like ball head size. Obviously, if you have a Pentax 6.7 that's in a different league, that is a massive camera. I would suggest a larger ball head than this, like 36 or something like that, maybe. But you have to keep in mind that this ball head, the XB series, is basically the reason why it's being bundled with this sort of like tripod itself is that when you actually like finish shooting and basically flip the legs over, the ball head itself is actually much more compact compared to Leo Photo's standard ball head, meaning that the tripod leg itself, when you actually sort of like collapse it together, becomes like really, relatively speaking, streamlined. And the great thing about this ball head is that because it's like streamlined and because it's compact, it doesn't weigh that much. And like I said, the overall weight of this tripod weighs just 1.4 kilograms, which for me, it is a uh, honor to carry around, not like a, like a dumbbell and stuff like that, but it's, and it also doesn't take that much of a space. And another area, I might go a little bit off topic, but if you don't like this ball head, you can always like remove it. There is a screw there. Uh, one moment, guys. <laughs> Let me just, this, this takes a while. Let me just get this, cinch this down. The legs are, okay, going down. You can basically, uns let me just unscrew this. You can basically remove the ball head itself and you can basically attach like a gear head or some kind of like three-way, uh, I guess, head. But the reason why they bundled this together is like I said, it makes that, you know, compact size when like traveling with a breeze. So I basically use it as a default like setup. Areas to note is that I don't use it that all, often at all, but you can change the angle of the legs by there's like two, three angles that you can actually adjust. So if you want to like shoot a really low angle, you can do that with this tripod actually. And unfortunately, I don't shoot at low angles. If you're doing video work, that might be essential for some, but you can do that. And obviously, the what I call the Unlocking of the section is the sort sort of like a bolt type of like num lock type of uh, function found in most Gitzo tripod and most tripods. I mean, I mean, there's this debate uh, overall debate of people liking this type of you know locking mechanism. I'm super neutral. Sometimes I diss this like functionality because when you're wearing gloves outside in a cold environment, you think you tighten it. But you realize that when you have it set up, it starts to like extend or your tripod goes, starts to sink in and stuff like that. If you're a professional, you've experienced this, this is a trauma. And I wish they have those, what you call recently announced, what you call, what you call latchet type of like locking, similar to Manfrotto's. Leofoto started introducing them, I think last year or so, but those are much more efficient because you know 100% it's being locked in, 100% it's not locked in, unlock, lock, while this, it's like real, it's like a, you have to use your hand muscle, hand nervous system to tell if it's locked in, you think it's locked in, but it's not, <laughs> it kind of pisses me off, unfortunately, but I wish they introduced that into the system, but I realized that that latchet system kind of makes the sort of like the overall surface area of the tripod protrude a little bit more, so it's not for traveling, so I guess that's one of the reasons why many companies like Gitzo use this system for their traveler series to make it more like streamlined so no obstructions when you're like transporting this on the side of a bag or maybe uh like a bag that comes with actually so so yeah that's sort of like my basic coverage of the leo photos 
Urban Series LX two five four CT tripod. Obviously, I did not cover every single details about this tripod. I just mentioned the most important part. Obviously, I mean when I actually go from point A from home to my destination, I actually when I'm like staying for the night, I actually stick this in uh, my suitcase, which is like thirty five liter suitcase. This fits perfectly fine without any problems and when I get to point B I basically take this out from my suitcase and basically shoot maybe at night or in the hotel and stuff like that so yeah in terms of overall size and footprint I enjoy using this tripod and you can actually stick uh, sort of like a bag there's a hook at the bottom of the center column so you can add additional weight to this tripod if you feel unsecured but I don't do that due to the fact that what if I need a blower because a dust like fell on my lens and stuff like that and I don't want to access my bag being hung right here and and then when I move remove the bag and stuff like that the tripod just moved and everything you compose is all like oh I fail miserably kind of I never do that so when I'm shooting I have my backpack on my bag and just have this like sit there because this weighs like 1.4 kilograms which I think is sufficient when even in a little bit of a breezy condition it will get the job done so yeah and I'm very confident confident to say that this is going to be stuck in my arsenal for quite a long time so yeah that's basically sort of my coverage of the Leo Photos LX254 CT tripod so if you have any questions or any inquiries, I'm happy to reply. I am a Leo Photo user, not sponsored, not affiliated at all, but hopefully they will watch my video sometime and give me something new <laughs> to review if I if I get the opportunity. It would be a blast. So yeah, that's basically my coverage of the travel tripod that I use as of 2024, and it's not going anywhere, unfortunately. <laughs> so yeah, we'll see you next time. Peace out.